are at the midway point of the 2022 NFL season. What we're going to be talking about in this episode of Time to Football, giving you our mid-season awards. Who's going to be MVP, Coach of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, as well as previewing Week 10 of the 2022 NFL season. Hello, everyone. Welcome in to a brand new episode. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel that we like to call Time to Football. But that's not all. We also have another host that joins us on a weekly basis. I want you to give a warm welcome to Anthony Lioness Duvernay. Hey, Lioness. <laughs> That's right. I got the main out today. I'm ready. It's well, time to football. Let's get to it. Time for football, yes. <laughs> That's my chat. Yeah, we were just talking about this off air. The amount of times people come up to me is like, Hassan, I couldn't find your channel. Time for football. I searched everywhere. Like, no, 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 no. no. Time to. Time to. Time to football. Just remember that. Uh, I should have I, I should have like called that. you lion, not lioness. Yeah. Lioness is like the girl term, right? Yeah. Or it okay, is. that's okay. Well, hey, lion. Let's start over. All right, Anthony Lion Duvernay. Thank you. Related to Devin uh, Duvernay. Yeah, which had a, he had a good game yesterday. He was I would a, have yeah, to the say. Ravens in general. I mean, 27-13 victory over the Saints. No big deal. They're looking good. They're looking good. Now they look forward to their bye week coming up here in Week Ten. Uh, how's your morning going, by the way? It's great. Yeah. I'm feeling good. What's today? Tuesday? It is Tuesday. My morning's going well. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that, man. How about yourself? It's good. Uh, we voted today, me and my wife. Um, I, okay, so I've been getting texts. You've been getting texts and yeah. emails and voting. Dude, it's so annoying. It's to the point now where people text me and it's like, okay, now I know who not to vote for. Like, if you send me a <laughs> text, I'm not voting for you. Like, it's annoying. I actually did have um, <laughs> one person. Okay, because here in Georgia, there's like a there's a brown guy running for office. I don't know, what, district, whatever. Don't know yeah. what he stands yeah. for, but you he got your vote. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You would think, you know, and that's what they thought because they text me and they were like, oh, hey. We're part of the Asian Advocacy Fund, and this guy is running, and we just wanted to see if you had his vote. And I'm like, so you're only reaching out to me because I'm brown, and you think I'm going to vote? Now I know who not to vote for. Yeah. Congratulations. You lost my vote. Yeah. Just because you assume that I'm going to vote for someone just because- You know because- what? Put in the comments who you voted for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Herschel Walker. He oh, wa- my God. He wants to legalize cocaine in strip clubs. No comment. Raphael Warnick doesn't care about babies. Oh, my gosh. Easy, bro. This channel. Bro. He, wants to, he wants to make breastfeeding illegal. <laughs> bro, politics? I will never be associated with any political affiliation <laughs> ever on this channel. Who cares? But all these, man, all these ads. Bro, I just got really hot. <laughs> I just got really hot for a second. Woo! All yeah. right. I feel like a rotisserie chicken with these lights, bro. Whew. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, the topics we're talking about. You know, politics. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> and then he held a gun to my head. Oh, my gosh, man. man. These, these ads, crazy. man. I don't know. I don't That's know what crazy. to believe. Anyways, let's talk about football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here, we're here to talk about. Uh, mid-season awards. Um, I guess we're like a little bit half or past the halfway point of yeah. the regular season, but I mean, there's bye weeks and everything. So players have played eight games, nine games. So at this point, we want to just take a look at, Hey, who's going to be offensive player of the year, defensive player, rookies, comeback player, even the most valuable player of the year award. So, uh, let's start off from the bottom, I guess, okay. and then go all the way to the top. So let's save the MVP for last. Ooh. Okay. Let's start with comeback player of the year. This is a pretty fun one because comeback player of the year, this could be like, oh, you had a bad year the previous year or maybe you were injured and now you're just having a very good season. There's a couple of candidates. One, I think honorable mention, should be Saquon Barkley uh, for your New York Giants because, I mean, the way that he's playing right now, nobody really expected Saquon to be Saquon like of 2018 or 2019. But he is, and he's doing a very good job and has helped the Giants get to a uh, winning record at this point. But my money, it's going to be on Geno Smith. Like, Ooh, just, that's solid. Geno Smith. That's good. That's a good one. I think uh, 2,200 yards passing pretty much, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions, and uh, they haven't skipped a beat, the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, those are some good candidates. Um, I think Geno Smith, man. I, he, I think he should take it. Yeah, he yeah, should yeah. take it. Yeah, I think Geno's a good one. That's good. Um, now, here's a very difficult one. Coach of the year. It's so tough because I have six names written down mm-hmm. that could be coach of the year that are deserving of it. Uh, there's Kevin O'Connell, who's the head coach of the Vikings. Mike McDaniel for the Dolphins. Robert Sala of the Jets. Nick Sirianni of the Eagles, Pete Carroll for the Seahawks, and then your New York Giants, Brian Dable. I mean, all these teams have been looking good, have turned it around. Uh, me yeah. personally, like – You know who I'm going with. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell tell the audience. Bu, 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 bu. Brian Dable. Bu, 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 bu. Representing the New York Giants. Yeah, he's turned this team around it, to the point where – People were like, Daniel Jones is not a franchise quarterback. It doesn't matter. Like, the way that he's coaching. Yeah. Like, maybe he's going to be around next year. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, like, winning record, it's all about Saquon Barkley and that defense. And Daniel Jones is doing enough. Like, I love Brian Dable. And I struggled with this because it was between two people for me. It was between Brian Dable and someone else. But I had to go in the direction of someone else. I'm going to go with Pete Carroll with the Seahawks. Oh, don't give me that face. Don't give me that look. Pete Carroll? For real? For real, man. I just... Coach of the year? Coach of the year. Okay. Brian Dable. I understand. But Pete Carroll, like, losing Russell Wilson and people already writing them off. And, I mean, he's done a, a fantastic job. Like, the defense has struggled in the in the first half of the season and then the last two, three weeks or so. Uh, he's really turned it around. He's just very good at adjusting, yeah. and Gino's having a good season as well. Okay. Pete Carroll's mine. Okay. I mean, I just – I'm not know. mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I mean – What I, What about the Jets, Coach? Robert Sala, yeah. Gosh, what a game against the Bills. Like, 2017 victory. <laughs> I couldn't – Bro, You like, walked in, and you, were, you saw the score. You're like, man, I can't believe that. Can't believe it. Yesterday, yeah. yesterday we were like, what are the easy games this year? Oh, the Bills going to win, the Packers going to win. And right. now look at this. Look at this, yeah. Like the Jets. <laughs> this is why you don't bet, people, because human error is serious. Exactly. Lose money and everything. Golly. Uh, yeah, and Robert Sala is definitely in the consideration. I mean, I didn't really have him in the co- Coach of the Year conversation until that game against the Bills. Like, that was yeah. like, okay, you're doing – it's like the same formula as the Giants were like good run game, great defense. Mm-hmm. Quarterback don't really ask too much from. Him. Yeah. I mean, just let's just win games. Okay. Uh but you said Brian Dable, I say Pete Carroll. Could be either one. Uh throughout the duration of this, by the way, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on on who you think is gonna win all these awards. Uh defensive rookie of the year. There's a lot of good defensive players out there. Sauce Gardner's out uh in the conversation, Aiden Hutchinson as well. Yep. Um that's mine. Who do you have? Aiden Hutchinson? Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a uh, – was an interception for a touchdown? That was cra- – yeah, yeah, his first one. <laughs> yeah. His first one. Congratulations uh, to and the big Michigan man. Yeah, he didn't have to run a lot for that touchdown because it was all already in the end zone. But, uh, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson, already four and a half sacks for the season. He's looking good for the Lions. And, I mean, the Lions defense is – until last week has not been the greatest, but maybe this is a uh, second-half season turnaround. Uh, I'm going to go with Sauce Gardner, the uh, defensive back for the Jets. Um, <clears throat> like, he's just long, lengthy, athletic, uh, yeah. top five pick. Uh, and then, I mean, I know people are going to say, like, the last play, I don't know if you saw it, with the Bills and the Jets, it was like a Hail Mary pretty much, fourth and 21. The yep. Bills just threw deep to Gabriel Davis. And people are going to say, like, oh, that was pass interference. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, maybe a little bit. But, like, he's made a lot of plays where it hasn't been pass interference uh, interference like that, where it's been clutch, and he's been, I don't know, really dominant against these top receivers. So, yeah, yeah Sauce Gardner uh, would be my choice for defensive rookie. Now, offensive rookie, mm. there's there's a few candidates out there. Chris Olave is up there for me, for the Saints. Uh, 43 receptions, 618 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. Has to take over for Michael Thomas, who's going to be missing for the remainder of the season. Uh, he's been looking good. I'm going to go with Kenneth Walker. Mm. He's the uh, running back for the Seahawks and already has 111 carries, 570 yards, and seven rushing touchdowns. 
Midway through the point. So, man, there's. Let me see. I think the Texans running back, Damian Pierce. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. that dude is a tank. He's really, really good. I think he's already got 600 yards rushing, but thing is, he only has three touchdowns. I like him a lot. Like that's that's the next Derrick Henry. He's so good, he's and they really got him good. in the fourth round too. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, only good thing that's going for the Texans right now is Damian Pearson. Uh, probably the biggest reason why, but uh, mm-hmm. that they're still in games. But Kenneth Walker's my pick. Um, I mean, just because he he already has seven rushing touchdowns, and he wasn't named the starter until Rashad Penny got hurt until like week four or whatever. But um, yeah, some pretty good candidates out there for offensive rookie. Yeah, I think Herschel Walker is a good pick too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Herschel Walker. No, I'm just kidding. Herschel Walker. What? <laughs> <laughs> Made his family move six times. Oh, my gosh. In six months. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know if you guys, whoever lives in Georgia, you guys understand. Yeah. It's, yeah. golly. You can't. After I'm this ready, day. I'm ready for normal TV. Yeah, you know? me too. After this day, we are back to normal. Uh, defensive player of the year. Now, there are very, very, very great candidates out there for defensive player of the year but you have one player in mind that plays for the cowboys yep parsons i want i think i agree with that yes <laughs> i think i i uh, i don't know okay it's 50 50 with who matthew judon on the patriots okay because micah parsons has eight sacks for the season say it on my face Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Matthew Judon, 11 and a half sacks versus Michael Parsons, who has eight sacks. So, I don't know. Judon has been very good for the Patriots. Uh, Justin Houston as well. I mean, he kind of was in the conversation. Eight and a half sacks for the Ravens. Two sacks in the last three games. Mm -hmm. Um, Two sacks each of the last three games. Uh, But Parsons, I would not be disappointed if Parsons wins that. Cowboys defense is looking good. Uh Offensive player of the year. We got two more. So, offensive player of the year. Who's having a very good season offensively? I would have to say Jefferson on the Vikings. Mm. Jefferson's having a very, very solid season mm-hmm. for the Vikings, 7-1. and one. Um, Here's what's funny about the MVP and offensive player of the year. It's like one player gets named the MVP. It's usually a quarterback. Yeah. And it's like someone else gets offensive player of the year. Like last year, it was Aaron Rodgers that won MVP, but Cooper Cup won offensive right. player of the year. It's like <clears throat> if Rodgers was the MVP, shouldn't he be the best offensive so, player? Yeah, I thought about that too. So my offensive is going to be a wide receiver, but my MVP is going to be a quarterback. Yeah, and just based off of that logic, for some reason, I, I disagree with it, but based off that logic, I'm going to go in the same direction as you. Uh, I'm going to say Tyreek Hill. That's too two damn uh, yeah <laughs> no yeah, we hard. disagree on the wide receiver I, I was trying to decide between hill and tua to oh tua i like it like especially in the last like two three games he's yeah, been man. lighting it up and gets the bears man he looked really good uh but i'm gonna say tyree kill just because mm. he's on pace to break calvin johnson's record of most receiving yards in a season mm. he's already got 1100 yards receiving and he's only played nine games so 76 and, receptions like and he can do backflips and he can do backflips some pretty ones as well uh and then it pads on that must be hard i do it all the time what are you talking about <laughs> um but a uh another candidate nick chubb nick chubb i mean he's kind of getting not as much attention just because the browns but he's already got 841 mm-hmm. yards rushing for the season uh 10 rushing touchdowns five and it's 5.6 yards per carry um He's just a touchdown machine. So, but I mean, all the candidates that we named, yeah, well deserving. Now, here is the uh, Holy Grail MVP, Woo! most valuable player, the most valuable quarterback. Should we I, say it together on the count of three? I think so. One, One two, two, three. three. Josh Allen. Hurts. <laughs> Dang. What? Josh Allen. Jalen Hurts, bro. Josh 
Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts. Okay. Elaborate. Yeah. Look at their record, Hassan. Mm-hmm. I see. Eight I mean, J- Jalen Hurts has not missed. The dude, he looks like he's been in the league for like five years. He looks amazing. It looks really good. He doesn't look like he's startled at all, like under pressure. He looks calm. He looks collected. His how many how many yards? I know you got it written it down. I know you got it written down. I got it, I got it written down. How, so, how many yards? So Jalen Hurts, uh, passing yards, uh, two thousand. Rushing yards, three hundred twenty six. So, but Josh Allen, twenty four hundred passing yards, three hundred and ninety two rushing yards. So he hasn't beat. In both passing and rushing. But here's the thing. Josh Allen, eight interceptions for the season. Jalen Hurts, only five. So, okay, that's like, he, he's number two for me. He's number two. But okay. the, the record, like, there's no denying. Like, mm-hmm. the Eagles are good, not solely because of him, but, like, he has a very big reason on why yeah. the Eagles are 8-0. Um but I, okay, I like it, and I would go with Josh Allen if the Eagles weren't performing the way they were. Uh, understandable, I, I completely get that. I'm a Bill. I, I like the Bills a lot. Yeah, I do too. Uh, even though they lost to the Jets, I get it. It happens. It happens. You know, stuff happens. Uh, but mm-hmm. I say Josh Allen because, like I said, 2,400 yards passing, almost 400 yards rushing, uh, and then total touchdowns. Like Jalen Hurts. Total touchdowns, passing and rushing combined, 18. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen, 23. Now, the eight interceptions does hurt. Josh Allen's in his case. But I'm still going to go in the direction of Josh Allen because if you took Jalen Hurts away, if you put in Gardner Minshew in that offense, mm-hmm. do you think that the Eagles would still be, maybe not undefeated, but they'd be a winning team? Yes. Okay. I mean, and and that's a product of good coaching, mm-hmm. good defense, good team around them. Where's Josh Allen? If you take him away, which, by the way, he's hurt. I think he hurt his elbow, and there's a chance that he doesn't play this week. Mm. So we'll find out for sure. Against but, who? Uh, <clears throat> against the Vikings. So they, they need him. Sheesh. Uh, and then Case Keenum could be starting. So, okay. I mean, this could be like a good – indication of like okay if josh allen is out and then the bills really do struggle like allen is valuable yeah the most valuable you know but uh but i think he's not all of the bills team but he does a lot you know fun fact about josh allen like he throws up before every game i heard about that but i didn't no, every I, game every game every game throws up just to calm his nerves or i guess so but I, I would think at this point, five years in the league or something, no, you still no. get nervous? I still oh. get nervous. All right. Is he bulimic? No, bro. That's a condition, bro. <laughs> get that checked out. No. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, <laughs> you heard it here first. Josh Allen is bulimic. <laughs> that, that is something that ESPN would talk about. Golly, yeah. ESPN just is a TMZ of sports. Mm. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is also another candidate. I don't want to discredit him. I say good football. Oh, man. I I, I tw- he's amazing. Dude's a magician. He's yeah. nice. He should be a, Yeah, he's an MVP for sure. But I think Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts have him beat. But go ahead with the fun facts. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to say uh, 2,600 yards passing, yeah. most in the league. 21 passing touchdowns, better than Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, and then only six interceptions. But uh, I was watching that Titans-Chiefs game. And uh, it seemed like the Titans, they did a really good job, you know, limiting them to just 20 points for the game. But th- that defense, it just looked like they were jogging. Like, whenever Patrick Mahomes, like, breaks out and, like, makes magic happen and everything mm-hmm. like that, it looked like Patrick Mahomes was just, like, jogging. And then this defensive player, number 93, uh, Tart is his last name. I don't, I don't know his f- first name. But Big old guy, big old guy was just like, <laughs> but it's like trying to run after him, couldn't get to him, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And now, th- and then he like completes something. And it's like, look what Patrick Mahomes did. It's like, this guy just gave us this so much time to like do it, everything. Like, of course he's gonna complete a pass, but come whatever. On, tart, hey, tart, come yeah. on, pop tart, <laughs> pop tart. Oh, how fitting. 
Uh, T- <laughs> Tier Tart, I think is his name. I don't know. No, it's Pop Tart. Pop Tart. Okay, it's we'll Pop-Tart. call him Pop Tart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's our mid midseason awards for MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Player, both Rookie Awards, Comeback Player of the Year, and Coach of the Year. If you guys disagree or have any other candidates that we did not mention at, at all, I encourage you guys to leave your comments down below and let me know your thoughts. We'd love to interact with all of you. Uh, now to wrap up the show, let's just go ahead and go through uh, each game briefly in Week 10. Just give you your thoughts, mm-hmm. who we think is going to win. <clears throat> Thursday night football. Atlanta Falcons on primetime. Woo! The first and only time this season. But I'm, I'm excited. so excited for that game. I'm looking forward to it. Dude, let's watch it together. What are you doing? Thursday night? Thursday night. It's a date. It's a date. We're doing it. Atlanta Falcons versus Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Uh, Sam Darnold has been activated for the Panthers, so it's a surprise because P.J. Walker, P.J. Mouth Breather, breather uh, got benched uh, <laughs> in favor of Baker Mayfield when they were getting blown out by the Bengals. And Sam Darnold has been activated, so it would be interesting to see. Uh, but anyways, in that game, who you got? I got the Falcons. I think I got the Falcons as well. I got the Falcons. Uh, it's, you know, I, we mentioned it last week. I just don't trust the Panthers' offense, even though they were looking good with Deontay Foreman, P.J. Mm. Walker. Last time they faced the Falcons, they looked great. Yeah. But, like, I still don't mm, – I don't trust it. Um, they're 2-7 and seven for a reason, and it's because of the offense. Yeah. I would say the defense can hold up sometimes, <clears> but – Offense is really the downfall of them, but we both we got the Falcons. Uh, and then moving to the Sunday, Munich, Germany. Seattle Seahawks versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Seahawks sit at 6-3. and three. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers sit at 4-5. and five. The Last-minute comeback win for the Bucs against the Rams. That was crazy. They were just giving up play after play, the yeah. Rams. That, prevent, that Dan Quinn prevent defense. We experienced that really well in – with the Falcons, but who do you got in this game? I'm I'm gonna go with the Seahawks. Okay, I'm okay. Go with the Seahawks. I I I can respect it. I can respect it. I'm gonna go with the Bucks. Mm-hmm. I think this is the beginning of like a turnaround for the Bucks, even though like they still don't look good, mm-hmm. and still like the Seahawks defense has gotten better. Actually, uh, when we were talking about defensive player of the year or defensive rookie, I forgot to mention one guy. Uh, Tariq Woolen, uh, he is the defensive back for the Seahawks. He has four interceptions for the season. Uh, he limited Hopkins last week to just under 40 yards. Uh, but he's been a big reason why the Seahawks defense has been better. But wow. I, th- I do think, I don't know, I think it's the comeback. The comeback starts here for the Buccaneers. I think they'll be the Seahawks. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Uh, Minnesota Vikings versus Buffalo Bills. We mentioned Josh Allen mm-hmm. dealing with his oboe issues. We don't know if he's going to be starting just yet, but this could be the game of the week. 7-1 Vikings versus the 6-2 and two Buffalo Bills. Who you got? If Josh Allen is in, I'm going with the Bills. If he's out, probably the Vikings. Probably. You're not confident in the Vikings if Josh Allen's out? No. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. And, and see, the thing with the Vikings is people were talking about Oh, the record, they're 7-1, but they haven't really beaten anyone. Like, the Steelers, the Bears, mm. like, mm. you know, whatever. Uh, and then they got their one loss was they were destroyed by the Philadelphia Eagles. So this is the next best yeah. challenge for them. Um, so we'll see. you seen that uh, video of Kirk Cousins with the chains and, like, Yes, the- bro. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> Gosh, he's low-key fit. I didn't expect that. Yeah, do this well. Yeah, he is. I th- I thought a lot of quarterbacks would have like dad bods, and I don't know I probably just grew up with Peyton Manning, so like. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, that was hilarious. Um, Detroit Lions versus Chicago Bears. Hey, I mean these teams, they're getting better. Like the the that's, Bears, like that's Thanksgiving. Detroit Lions, Chicago Bears. Yeah, isn't don't they always play each other for Thanksgiving? Well, the Lions always host, but it's not always the Bears that they play. But it's not. I I, for, I don't know who the Lions play. Maybe they play them again because they play them twice. I maybe I don't man. I, I don't know. Tripping. I always thought that was the Thanksgiving game: the Bears and the Lions. No, it's always uh the Lions and, and the some... Cowboys host. Like they're each individual games. Okay. okay. So, <clears throat> but yeah, the Lions and the Bears face off this weekend, and they've been looking better. Like Justin Fields has 
been better. I mean, ever since that game against the Patriots, uh, he's been holding up against all these teams that he's he's faced. And then the Lions beating the Packers. We'll, we'll talk about the Packers when we get to the Packers. But Lions, Bears, who you got? I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the Bears. I'm going to go with the Bears. Yeah. I want to give love to Detroit. Me too. Because I like them, but, but I do like the way Justin Fields is playing. They're yeah. finally getting Darnell Mooney involved. Chase Claypool, mm-hmm. actually in his first game, actually might have been a good thing because even though he didn't get a lot of love in the passing game, he still opened things up for yeah. the other players. Like a lot of attention was on him. Open things up for Cole Komet, their tight end, for Darnell Mooney. Uh, yeah. And this offense is looking better. And the Lions lost their tight end. Like, I don't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and then DeAndre Swift as well. Like, he's still dealing with whatever injury he's got. So, uh, we both like the Bears yeah. in this game. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars versus Kansas City Chiefs. Three and six Jaguars beating the Raiders coming back 17 to zero. Man, the Raiders are just. They're the new Atlanta Falcons, man. Yeah. Uh, and the Kansas City Chiefs, <clears throat> Magic Mahomes, making things yeah. happen, uh, beating the Titans in overtime. Who you got? Man, the Chiefs and the Jaguars? Chiefs and Jaguars. I need a second on this one. Okay. I'll give you – take your time. Let's go ahead, and while you're thinking, let's go ahead and roll a commercial. Uh, Herschel Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was perfect. Thank you. That was, <laughs> that was good, bro. <laughs> it's the last day that we got to deal with this. I'm going to go with the cheese, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the Chiefs as well. Uh, it's just Jaguars, impressive victory, but I think that was more of a Raiders collapse than yeah, a Jaguars yeah. comeback. So uh, the Chiefs, one of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, the Cleaver Browns versus the Miami Dolphins. Three and five Browns, six and three Dolphins. Browns coming off their bye week. Dolphins continue to win with the return of Tua. Yeah, yeah. Dolphins. Dolphins. I like it. I like it a lot. Mike McDaniel. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Hill might break the record that game. Ooh, for uh, Calvin. Oh, he's got like 800 yards to go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's gonna happen. That's gonna. Yeah, for sure. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to go with the, the Dolphins. I do think that the Browns are going to run all over the Dolphins, but, I mean, this this offense cannot be stopped for the yeah. for the Dolphins at this point. Uh, so, yeah, I like the Dolphins in this game. Houston Texans versus the New York Giants. Believe it or not, both of these defenses, actually, they have their moments. They're pretty good. Uh, even though the record for the Texans doesn't look like it, they've been holding up on their own against yeah. a pretty tough team. So, uh, who you got in this game? You know it. Giants, G-Man, baby. Yeah, I think after a bye week, <laughs> having some time to think about it. I know the Texans had a long uh, week as well, playing on Thursday night, but <clears throat> I'm going to go with the Giants as well. I, 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 we don't know the status of Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks wanted to get traded, and he didn't get traded, and now he's just sitting out. Like, we don't know whether he's going to be practicing. We don't, like, yeah. you know, this offense, they need someone to step up, and they showed some flashes last week against the Eagles, but I still like the Giants. I agree. Uh, the Saints versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the Saints coming off that 27-13 loss against the Ravens. The Steelers coming off a bye week. Who you got? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Saints. The Saints on the road. I like it. I'm going to um, go with the Saints. I like Tomlin. And I, I see the Steelers fighting. Like, I don't think they've been blown out. Have they been blown out? They have been blown out. They faced the Bills. I think they lost like 38-3. to Okay, that's the Bills, though. Yeah, that's the Bills. And this is the Saints. But you're still going with the Saints? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints. Okay. I just wanted to give the Steelers some love because I, I don't want to discredit them. No, I, I, I feel I that. They're working hard this year. They really are. They really are. Um, They just traded Chase Claypool, so right. like maybe. Which is the reason I think I went with the Saints. Yeah. It's, I mean, their offense is slowly <clears throat> like, you know, yeah. uh, going downhill. But. And Najee Harris hasn't really done anything. Uh, I I do think that no, I'm going to agree with you. I think the Saints mm-hmm. got this one. Uh, 
The Denver Broncos versus Tennessee Titans. Titans almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs. They played hard. And then the Denver Broncos, we know about their struggles. Will it continue? Who you got in this game? Titans. I like their coach a lot. I do too. Mark Vrabel, very good coach. Like, the way he just... I don't know what I could is. I could cry. No. Uh, I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, just the way that he plans yeah. for every team. I think that's what it is. You're yeah. right. He seems prepared. Very prepared. Like, he looks at the player. Like, Patrick Mahomes, I know that he put up 400 yards and, like, 68 passing attempts. But if you watch that game, like, he was prepared against Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Like, the run defense is actually really good. Uh, and so they knew that they knew that they're going to pass a lot. And like, he gave them a lot of trouble for three quarters of that game. So I really like the Titans, um, a very underrated team, I like them too, yeah. um, year after year, whether it be Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same result. Like they just keep on, uh, causing havoc to their opponent and they, for the most part, win games. So I, I'm going to go with the Titans yeah. against the Broncos. Uh, Indianapolis Colts versus Las Vegas Raiders. We just talked about the Colts hiring Jeff Saturday. Raiders blowing that 17-0 lead. Who you got? I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the Raiders just because of all the changes with the Colts program. Yeah. I'm going to agree. Yeah. I agree. Unless Nick Foles starts. Unless Nick Foles starts. <laughs> I don't understand, man. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, I like the Raiders in this game. Uh, Dallas Cowboys versus the Green Bay Packers. Cowboys coming off a of bye week. The Packers, oof. Oof. It's not good. Not good for the you Packers. You see Little Wayne's tweet? No, what are you saying? <laughs> he, he said, we should have got rid of number 12 before the season started. Oh, not from Lil Wayne. And not from Young Money. From, yep. Golly, man. Shoot. Yep. He's been a Packers fan for a while. You hear that song Green and Yellow when like Black and Yellow was big mm-hmm. back in the yeah. day? It was green and yellow, man. Yeah, he's a big Packers fan. Big one. Um, that's brutal. Uh, oh, yeah. We, yeah. We gave. We said. We said that we were done with the Packers last week. Mm-hmm. So you know, this week I'm going with the Cowboys. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. We said we, they were done before that game against the Lions, Be, just because their schedule remaining yeah, is yeah, just yeah. crazy. Like at Look, best. I like, thought. I thought. I think I gave them that game though. I was like, oh yeah, the Packers got that. Oh game. yeah, yeah. No, me too. <laughs> like I, I was like, all right, they got like Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. They're gonna run over the yeah the Lions, but against one of the worst defenses in the league, they couldn't really do anything. They, like, they come were, on, like they were bad cheese out there. They were the worst kind of cheese. What's the worst kind of cheese out there? Ooh. Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Only right answer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, man. It's um, I'm going to go with the Cowboys as well. I think the extra week to prepare against a team that's just <laughs> not looking good, man. Cowboys. That's our pick. Uh, Arizona Cardinals versus the Los Angeles Rams. Mm. Have no idea what's going on with the Cardinals, but they're doing Cardinals things. And the Rams, they had a tough slate of games. I mean, that kind of speaks volumes for the record, but yeah. still, like, offensively, they're not that good. Who you got in this game? I'm going to go with the Cardinals. Mm. Yep. Mm. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. it has got to be one upset there has to be i think i think that'll be a good upset there has to be at least one upset and this, yeah the rams offense isn't doing well the cardinals offense is stacked fair enough fair enough uh yeah we were talking about it when the cardinals were playing the seahawks <clears throat> uh you're like oh man you saw robbie anderson on the screen you're like hold up hold up they have that, yeah d hop Robbie Anderson, yep. James Conner just came back, Ertz. Zach Ertz, uh, Kyler Murray, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh, there's someone else. Marquise Brown, who's injured right now, but, like, when he comes back. Yeah. Like, what's going on, you know? That's like crazy. So, This is a really good offense. We don't know what the heck is going on. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams. 
We disagree on one. But the Rams, just because like this defense for the Cardinals is just not great. So yeah. I have some faith in Cooper Cup. And even yeah. if it's Stafford throwing his way like 15 times. Yeah. Like, I don't. Because I, I just can't trust the Cardinals at this point, man. Like, on yeah. paper, they look like it's a good team, but. <clears throat> nah. I, I was considering Cup for like the offensive MVP. Yeah. But he got that last year. He got MVP last year, right? And he's having a very good season again, but like nobody's really talking about it. I think it's because the Rams just aren't really doing good. Yeah. Uh, Sunday night football, Los Angeles Chargers versus the San Francisco 49ers, Northern California versus SoCal. Uh, we've got the Chargers coming off a 20-17 to victory against the Falcons, mm. and then the 49ers coming off their bye week. Who do you like in this game? 49ers. Mm. They seem unstoppable with Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I know it was just one game pretty much where McCaffrey just played the majority of it, but mm-hmm. still, like... Jimmy Garoppolo has so many weapons. And then Debo, he wasn't even playing oh, the Debo. game before. But, like, if he comes back in this game, like, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, McCaffrey. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, uh, And then their backup running back, Elijah Mitchell, who's actually really good, could be activated off of IR. I know I picked the Chargers to go to the Super Bowl. That was my AFC pick mm-hmm. prior to the season. And I want to pick them. I really do. I'm going to go with the 49ers as well. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to go with the 49ers, man, just because that defense is so good. And then the 49ers defense um, is just slowly slowly recovering uh, from some injuries that they had in the beginning of the season. So I think that's the Chargers offense is going to struggle. Uh, but then finally, Monday Night Football, the Washington Commanders versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Commanders looked to go with Taylor Heineke in the beginning, yeah. kept up with the Vikings. Ultimately, they lost. The Eagles continue to be undefeated. We Eagles. like Eagles. Eagles. Yeah. Without hesitation, you like the Eagles. 9-0. I like the Eagles to go 9-0 and as well. That's uh, and crazy. Do you think an upset could happen? No, 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 no. I was testing you. Yeah, no. All right. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it. Uh, and upset's going to happen as well. Um, and then I think these two teams faced last time, like week two, week three, something like that. And then Devontae Smith had like 180 yards receiving or something crazy like that. Uh, and I think he's going to have a big game again. Uh, but that's just going to wrap up our episode of Time to Football. Hey, right. it, this was a blast. I had lots of fun doing this. I encourage you to keep on co- coming back to the show. Oh, I will say... Tough. Uh, my friend Larry, which the Time of Football faithful know who Larry is, requested to be a co-host on the show. So maybe we can get like a three. I oh. have to bring like a. Oh, I thought Larry was coming from my spot for a second. Oh, no, 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 no. Larry this... the Lobster. I'm coming for you, bro. Yeah, show him on the basketball court. Come what? out Saturday mornings. You hoop... Where where do y'all play again? We hoop at uh, Rabbit Hill. That's right. That's right. Rabbit, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on out, man. Outside. Um. Yeah. I, I actually. I'm not gonna name who it was, but you know who he, I'm gonna. He doesn't watch the show. Kyle rushing. Uh, so <laughs> he. Uh, I was. I invited him out to play basketball, and I was like, "Hey, man, like you should come out and play." Uh, he's like, "Yeah, man. I used to play basketball all the time. Where, where you guys play? Like, I love to come. And, like, he seemed excited. Like, oh, dude, this is awesome. We got an extra body. Like, we need some people. And then he was like. Yeah, where you guys play? Oh, we play at Rabbit Hill Park. It's like, oh, is that outdoors? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he said, oh, no, that actually, that ruins my shot. And I was like, what? It, it's it's pickup basketball. It ruins his shot? It messes up with the shot. So the, I he, guess the win, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I, the, maybe, with the circumference of the... the <laughs> yeah, due to the Earth's rotation. Just do this before you shoot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which direction is it? Um, I, yeah, I don't know. This is on my shot. That's really cool cool. guy. If you do watch it, Kyle, you're awesome. But like placebo effect, bro. It's all in your head. Yeah, I yeah, whatever. Double rim, maybe that was it. That's That's what it is. That's what what it it is, man. That's a double rim. Uh, anyways, uh, subscribe to this channel if you guys aren't already subscribed. Follow us on social media at on Twitter. I'm at it's Asad Khan. Anthony on Instagram at I am Duvernay. Go ahead and give us a follow and interact with us throughout the week. Uh, With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you next week.
Take care. Dun, 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 dun.